Hello, welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm inventor Dan Zen, and Zim at ZimJS.com is an open source library to help you make interactive media on the HTML canvas. And this is bubbling. We're going to take a look at the Zim text area, which is new. Uh, we had shown a capture, no, not a capture, a maybe a capture as well, but a Zim bit on how to apply input text to Zim. And that was to overlay a traditional HTML input field using the create.js DOM element. And then we would have to scale that and position it in place. And that was a sort of a three-step process, a bit of a pain in the neck. So recently we added the Zim loader, and that is also an HTML tag, an input tag type file. And we had to do the same thing there. We have to um, add that, overlay it, and position it, and scale it properly. So we thought, hey, we should do that with the input tag too, so that we don't have to do um, all these steps each time we want input text or indeed selectable text in Zim or on the canvas. So let's take a look at some code and see how we can do that. We're here in a Zim template. You can grab that from Zim Zip or the Zim Frame place and it's a fit template tube not that it matters we come on down here we've removed the button that comes with the template and now we are going to type a text area so var text area is equal to a new zim dot text area like so dot center we may as well center that on the stage and we've got a stage dot update after now that you would think would work, except it won't. And we'll come back and tell you why. Let's take a look at this in the browser. There it is not working. And we will F12, where we see we have a, an error in the console that says Zim text area, please provide a reference to Zim frame. And then we're getting an error. It can't make this. And when we center it, it gives us an error. So we need to pass in the frame as the first parameter. And the reason for this is the text area, the HTML tag is overlaid on the canvas. And we need to know where to position it and how big to make it. And that will, will depend on the, the scaling of the frame. So we pass in Zim frame or the, the reference to the frame. You see here, there's the frame being made. We pass that in. And then we know whenever we scale the frame, we it, it's able to scale the text area to it. And indeed, same with the uh, the loader that we, we did a, a what's bubbling on the loader just previously. Same deal. Uh, it'll know where to scale and position that. Now, one thing I forgot to mention in the loader, and I don't want to forget to mention it this time, is that if we ever manually change the scale or the location of this text area or the loader, we need to say uh, text area dot resize round brackets. So we need to apply the resize method to it. And what that will do is it will then properly position and scale the, the overlaid HTML tag. Okay. So if you've just put it in here and the stage is scaling and stuff like that, uh, that's handled internally. But if you manually move it, then you'll need to call the resize event on that afterwards. Or sorry, the resize uh, method on that after. Okay, great. Let's see if this works now. So we save that up and we refresh here. And there we have it. Test, test. So now we have input uh, and selectable text. As a matter of fact, you can make this read only. If you make this read only, then you can't make any changes to it, but you could only uh, select what's there. So that's nice. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do now? How about let's find out how to find out what the text is or set the text. And that is, well, it's the text area dot text property or text area dot current value property. Um, and you can find out every time that changes, and I use the word change loosely here because it's actually an input event. Let's do it. We say text area dot on input. Now there is a change event as well, but the change event, ooh, we've got a promise. <laughs> Thanks. Don't want to promise. I want two round brackets. Um, the change event will trigger when the the text area loses focus and the content has been changed. It's different than it used to be. 
So that's a good one to have maybe, I suppose, but it, it's not really how most of the changes in Zim work, where any immediate change shows up. The only other change that works like that is the color picker. The color picker, you can, you can set a color and therefore you'll receive a set event, but then when you hit OK and that color is changed, uh, then you get a change event. But most of them, like a slider, the change event happens immediately. So you would probably be expecting text area dot on change. So as soon as I type stuff into it, every time I hit a letter, a change event would, would trigger. It's not the case. That's an input event. Now we did waffle and maybe we should, you know, be consistent in Zim and how we provide change events, but in this case we're passing through the events coming from the HTML text field. So that's how the change event works on a text field, and then there's an input event for every single time you type a key or cut and paste into it. All right, so that's in this case. There's also a blur and a focus event that we pass on through. So let's zog what we're getting in the text area. Text area dot text, for instance. And we save this up, refresh here, view the console, F12, and type test. Hmm. Did it refresh? Test. There we go. T-E-S-T -E showing up in the console as we're typing every time we input that. Now, uh, what I would recommend is if you've got some text, like uh, we just made um a meme maker, for instance, and we want people to be able to put some text onto the meme. We don't leave this text on the meme. It's got a little cursor that's flashing there, and it's a pain in the neck to scale and move and stuff. You have to call the resize on it and, and so forth. So I would recommend you have an input field saying, hey, type some text here. When you type the text, you hit a submit button or something, or maybe it just changes it immediately. But this isn't the final product. The final product would be a Zim label or traditional canvas text. So let's try setting that up. And here we would have var label, for instance. Var label is equal to a new zim.label, like so. And just so it doesn't say the word label, right, we'll, we'll set the text to nothing. We'll add that to the stage, add to stage, and we'll position it dot pose. 100 comma 100 something like that okay now we will update the labels text property label dot text is equal to text area dot text like so and update the stage stage dot update okay let's see what that does we refresh here make this a bit bigger test ooh test okay so now the label is updating some traditional uh, canvas text and we can make that drag by going dot drag like so we save that up and refresh here and say drag me and now we can pick up the label and drag the label that was made you know that kind of thing all right and once you've submitted you can close this or this might be on a little panel or something like that and that is the well should we show you the resize uh, let's just see if it works. Yeah, yeah, we'll see if it works. Now, you can't, uh, if you immediately move it, I think it's fine. So if, if there's a slight delay in how long it takes to figure out, should I place this? Uh, 30 milliseconds or something like that. So if you if you go text area at the moment, dot pose, uh, three, well, I'll make it 600 comma 600 or something like that, and hit submit. I think it's all good still. So there's the text area at 600, 600, and you can see that it's still working. But if we put a delay on that, um, zim dot time out round brackets of one second, comma function, then move the text area in the function. So there's a, that's a, just a set timeout, except I'm always annoyed at set times out. They didn't put the time in as the first parameter. They always make you forget it by putting a comma on the end of the, you know, that thing. So I just swapped that around. There's a few other features to the Zim timeout as well. But anyway, that's uh, same as basically a set timeout. So we save that and refresh here. There it is there. I could type in it. 
And oh, I had no stage update. <laughs> right. So we'll position it and stage dot update. Semicolon. And try this again. Refresh. So there it is there. And and look, I'm still typing over here and the container has been moved, but the HTML tag that I was typing in did not move. It's like oopsies. Okay, so that's bad news. Uh, at which point you want to let's just put these on different lines so we can see this a bit better. We want to position it and then go text area dot resize like so method. Okay, that will position it, but then um, grab that and put it on into the right place. So now I'm typing down here. And if I uh, type something in, the typed in moves. Okay. Woohoo! Woot, as they say. Woot, woot. That's a text area. By the way, same deal if you've got your uploader and you want to. Um, move that uploader tag for some reason or move the uploader object for some reason later you might have to uh, loader dot resize that okay i forgot to mention that in the last bubbling hopefully you uh, have been enjoying all of these bubblings and yeah let's uh let's go back to the bubbling page here <laughs> yeah great that's what's bubbling at zim lately a new text area. Wonderful. You can use that for selectable. Oh, should I show you? <laughs> yeah, let me just show you quickly. If you will get rid of this timeout thingy. If you want, you can make this text area just selectable text and not in input field. So that is not in the event. It's when we make this frame. It's down the way a bit. So we'll go frame dot Oh, uh, frame colon frame. So what we're doing is converting this to the Zim Duo technique of a configuration object. Frame colon frame. Uh, you've got other things too, like the width and the height. And, um, you can change the background colors. You can style it. Should, do you want to even see? I mean, maybe you want to see what the docs look like. So pop on out to Zim, hit the docs, and then go text like so and we're at the text area so a frame a width the height the padding the color the back backing color border color border width corner shadow colors dashed id a placeholder so you're welcome to put in a placeholder and that will you know like hey type text here or whatever and then that goes away as soon as you start typing ah but what we're looking for is read only you can make this read only okay so let's try that we go frame read only now of course there uh true there there won't be anything in the text area and there is no way to provide content immediately but you can just say text area dot uh, text is equal to hello people like so right so we've made a text area we've made it read only we've added some content to it uh, there won't be any more inputting going on, so we, you know, we wouldn't need any of that. And then we refresh here. For a dump, for a dump. There's our text area that says "Hello, people." It's still selectable, but I can't type into it. And if you didn't want to see that backing, by the way, you can also just go uh, text area dot backing. Um, I guess dot remove from. The text area that would be one way or alpha equals zero or something like that so now there's no backing and you've got selectable text uh, on the canvas which is nice also that is html text and you can reference the tag by going text area dot tag and then you can say dot style dot uh, what css styles color i'll just do a simple one color is equal to red for instance, so now you've got all of the CSS styling that you uh, can do in HTML on that tag as well, if you so desire. And now that text is red and selectable. And not only that, it is scaling and, and moving to the right, right place there. Cool, huh? And that's um, the text area in Zim. 
at the what's bubbling. I'm glad I showed you that little bit at the end. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. If you haven't tried out Zim, please do. It's a lot of fun. ZimJS.com. Have a great day.